Hello and welcome to the show. I am back on Forza Horizon 4 today building another rally car. My vehicle of choice is the Escort RS Turbo, a car that I was very glad to see arrive in Horizon 4, something a little bit different, a really quite, uh, quite cool car, and I'm going to try and turn it into a rally monster. There are a concern, I'd say some concerns, but one primary concern really with this, Front-wheel drive converted to all-wheel drive, which, you know, all the cars in this series are run all-wheel drive, can often make a car a little bit twitchy. Now, it might not be too bad for what we're building this for, tackling the tackling the beach. There's no real high-speed sections to get big trouble, but it is always a concern with the cars. It's just, without a huge amount of tuning work, they do tend to get a little bit on the funky side, but we will see how it, uh, how it goes. Now, I doubt the standard engine is going to get this to the top of S1 class somehow, uh, but we will give it a try, potentially. If we do need to swap, Turbo Rally or Honda engine are our options, I think. I'm surprised no bigger engines go into this, but there we go. Uh, let's... Oh, I can't have rally light. I can't have rally lights and a front uh, <laughs> diffuser. That's a little bit disappointing, but there we go. Right, we want... Rally compound tyres, of course. We want as big a tyres as we can get, although they're not that large on this, which is a little bit of an issue. I would much prefer, uh, well, considerably considerably larger tyres, but there we go. Uh, but, I mean, we have seen... I mean, the, the fastest cars have been running on fairly... I think the, the VX220 was... Not massive fronts, but like two nine fives rear. The Demon was running like three four fives or three five fives or something like that. Uh, so big tires definitely work. I know in reality you'd probably want slightly skinnier tires uh, when you're on. In fact, in actual sort of rallying and so on, you want slightly skinnier tires. So you can actually cut through gravel and in this case sand. Uh, but that's not something that's really simulated on Horizon. So yeah, you just want as big a tires as possible to give you the most grip. This is not going to get to the top of the car, unless by some magical way the turbo gives us a million horsepower. Maybe not a million. I mean, a million would be okay. Wouldn't be very drivable, though. I don't think a million would work on our rally stage. It gets close, but not, not close enough, basically. Okay, engine swap time. Do we go turbo rally, or do we go... Ooh, the standard engine is very low. I guess I have to put some upgrades on. I'm kind of thinking turbo rally engine. I'm kind of thinking turbo rally engine for all this. It's good fun. I like the turbo rally. And it's nice that it's now more usable than it ever was before. We have got various upgrades that we can put on the engine. Uh, now we're just going to try and find the right combination of upgrades to get it to the top of the class. Oh, uh, which ones do we go for? Cash actually don't give as much power as I was expecting. Let's just stick on the whack on the big old turbo. <laughs> 172 horsepower from the big old turbo. But actually, if we do, if we get big old turbo, we de-restrict it, and then we can probably make up the rest of the PI with uh, little bits and pieces. We can go for things like gearbox. Uh, we can get a drive line in there. Oh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a, this is gonna be one of those annoyingly close, but not quite close in. Well, I say not quite close enough. Uh, we're gonna have to have a little fiddle around with the engine configuration. Okay, so maybe don't go big old turbo. Whack that down to there. Oh, and maybe go that and camshaft. Ah, oh, <laughs> it's always the way. Always the way. God damn it. Maybe go down there. No, that's that's gonna be too many. But if we whack that on there, and then no, nope, that's still gonna be. Uh, nope. <laughs> I think I think to be fair, we were better off with the uh, big old turbo, and without the. I think it was just. Well, I think we're better with big old turbo and restrictors in many ways. Uh, yeah, I think that's going to have to be the. Going to have to be where it's. It's only two pi. Two pi. At the end of the day, it's not a massive amount. We've got a lot of power. 550 horsepower, 600 torque, and let's not forget, a very light car, it's not that much heavier than the VX220 at just over 2,000 pounds. That's a big, big power to weight ratio in here. Concerns are, of course, conversion with the drive line, uh, front wheel to all wheel drive might make the car twitchy. The other downside, uh, tyres are not the largest. I would potentially be concerned about our levels of, of grip through the corners, but we're going to have to go find out. 
So, here we are on the start line of our beach rally stage. I'm going to have three runs to try and go as fast as possible through this course. The target to try and beat is a 157.4. Of course, I'm taking a minute off my finish time because of how I'm having to start this. But, uh, yeah, 157.4. Set, set last time out by the VX220. Can our escort get anywhere near that in terms of lap time, stage time, if you like. It's pretty damn fast off of the line, this car. It's a little wide through there. Don't want to get airtime if I can avoid it. However, we are actually, yeah, quite nicely quite nicely done through all of that. Hug the, well, I'll say hug the inside a little bit. There goes a teensy bit of oversteer. We'll get away with it to an extent. I just don't want to be wasting too much time going sideways. This a little bit larrier than the cars that we have run recently. And I know that's kind of strange considering we run Zondas and 250 LMs and that sort of stuff. But uh, yeah, this is already a little bit larrier than the likes of them. Although it is a more suitable, that is a more suitable kind of rally car. We will feed it through the next corner. Everything is good. Everything is not so good up here. Oh! <laughs> okay, I haven't quite got that change of direction sorted. Miss the fence on the inside if we can. Now it's going to get very, very narrow up through here. That's nicely done. <laughs> Good. We're, we're just brushing a lot of fences with the back of the car. The wing claiming many victims. Yeah, I mean, I don't have... Oh, that's a little bit too much airtime. I do not quite have the grip that I would like in this. Oh, it's got good speed, but we are lacking a little bit of grip through the corners. I can't quite turn in or carry as much speed as I want, and then we get this big, lazy oversteer. Although it's not too bad through here, because we can position the car. There we go. Now, run it up towards this next section. Don't get too much airtime if you can avoid it. That's just about okay. Through there, we'll bounce around a little bit more down here, naturally, as you do. Oh, <laughs> flung it onto its side. It's, yeah, it's certainly lively. We've had a few episodes actually quite sensible tame cars. Sensible tame cars in their handling characteristics, not the cars chosen. This is, yeah, back to the slightly bonkers. We get a good jump from the car, land it on the tarmac, but don't get it through the archway. We jumped very far there. It's actually a problem when you jump too far. Yeah, it's not a good, not a good first run. When you jump too far, it's very difficult to line the car up because you don't have time and the car's, well, pinging around from the landing. So, yeah, 2033. Not a great first run. Definitely more to come. Definitely more to come from the vehicle. I think it's going to struggle to fight with the Vauxhall, though. So as we move on to our second run, let's try and keep the car a little bit better under control. I think it's, it's going to be difficult trying to make up, I think, too much time with this. A sub two minute is probably doable, but it's going to be quite close to what the car is, you know, what the car is capable of. Uh, it's just not got, it's the front end kind of grip that we are, an overall grip, but the front end doesn't really get turned in all that nicely to some of these corners and that just means you're that little bit slower you just you waste that little bit of time there we go as we uh round the sand dune yeah you've got to wait here a little bit longer perhaps to get on the power oh we're bouncing out a smidge wide we'll try and uh, get a nicer line through there if we can come on escort find some grip don't take out the fences yeah, it's just, just runs a little wide on the exit. Just everywhere, it's a little bit more of a pain to get through the corners. It will make up some time with its acceleration. The turbo rally engine, all the power, all the torque in a very lightweight car is going to be good for that. God, that changed direction there. Like, there's a small hill on the inside. It's not that bad, but it's enough. It's enough for a car like this, a car that you're potentially having trouble with getting around the course anyway. It's enough for that to have... Uh, all sorts of issues. I think third gear is actually going to be where I want it with this car. First and second, very, very short in this. We don't bounce around as much there, which is nice. Up to 105 miles an hour is one of the faster cars down the back stretch. I have no doubt we could get 100 miles an hour on the climb up the beach as well as it's coming up if I wanted to. Now, we're going to run a bit wider here. That's okay. I'm going for a neat, tidy line on the approach up the hill. Here we go. Yeah, we do get 100, although if we do 100, we then end up bouncing quite wide. Uh, we got away with it, though, just. That's about as wide as I'd want to take that before you start losing a lot of time. Now, through the S's we go. Little bit thrown around, nothing too terrible around the final hairpin 
we go again. I, can't, <laughs> I just cannot get on the power in the same way we have with just about everything else. Up towards the big jump, though, we are not quite as far. However, we land much better. Here we go now. Accelerates towards the finish. It's going to be up towards 130 miles an hour as we cross the line. It's almost, almost, almost a sub two minute run. We got better. It was better that time. That better that time. Two minute point four for the escort. Is that grip? <laughs> it really is. It just cannot quite get going out of the corners or carry the speed. It's fun. It is fun. It just lacks that little bit of corner speed. Four tenths of a second is what we are looking for as we head on to this final run. That might just about be doable. I'm not sure where I'm going to get all of that much more speed. Maybe we don't clip any fences or minimal amount of fence clipping would be a uh, good idea here. Uh, Otherwise, that last run was pretty good. Otherwise, that last run was was pretty good. Uh, bouncing around again. I don't really yeah, want as, any air time if, if I can avoid it. Uh, through the dunes now. Try and keep it neat and tidy through here. It's less spectacular this time around. I'm hoping that might be faster. There, that's the sort of corner. Which is, I can't get the front end turned into that one as well as we have seen from some of the very, very fast cars. I actually cut that corner a little bit more than I have done with some vehicles. I think we'll get away with it in this relatively okay. Use the banking a little bit as we dive off of that corner into the car park we go with a big slide. And I say a big slide, that's in relative terms for me. Actually quite a big slide on the exit. I'd rather have not have done that, but never mind. We're a little bit better coming down this section, I think, even with a bit of a fence clip along the way. Now, get the car into this corner here. Such a nasty bugger of a turn, which we've Taking a slightly different line through all of it. I'm just going to keep it in third through here. I think the very, very short gear ratios in the car will work better if we... Because <laughs> the Turbo Rally engine has a lot of power and torque within a, a small window of operation. Not as bad as it used to be, uh, but still, you've got to... Uh, yeah, you've got to be a little bit careful with the Turbo Rally. We're going to run in... Again, I quite like the running in deep line, although it's a little bit deeper than I would have liked through there, although it's going to be a much... It's a weird, interesting corner, that one, as to how you how you approach it, because you can run in quite deep like that, but you get a really good run on the exit, but you'll be slower mid-corner. I'm not sure what the fastest way around that is. Uh, it will depend on the car and how much grip said car is, has got as to how tight you can take that corner and what sort of speeds you can maintain. Uh, come on. Come on, Ford. We can do this. I don't know if it's a better run. It's not bad up here. Now, if we can get... Oh, we're in a little bit of trouble. We have jumped far. We've got the landing, though. Got the landing, I only had to do a small correction. Here we go, run towards the finish line. We have gone fast. Actually, a pretty good final run, I'm surprised. Surprised with the speed we got out of it on that final run. We break the two minute. We actually get like two seconds faster. That is not at all what I was expecting. Where did that come from? <laughs> it is a 158.1 for the air score. And I am, yeah, I say a bit bemused. I was not prepared. I was not prepared at all for that sort of speed. I mean, it felt neater in most places, but yeah, but <laughs> there we go. That is a surprisingly fast run. That is a surprisingly fast run for the car. So much so that it will put the Escort up into a third place. It will beat the Pagani Zonda. In fact, we will have two British cars in the top three now. From having a 1-2 for the Italians, the British cars are now doing pretty well. We are a tenth of a second down on the 250LM, and I did not expect to see the... Certainly after those first couple of runs, and before even building it, I didn't expect the Escort to be really up there fighting with the likes of the 250LM. But it got within a tenth. Not as easy to drive. Nowhere near as easy to drive as the 250LM, I will say. But we beat the Zonda by nearly a second. We beat the S2000 by a second, so that is a very, very good showing. Uh, that, though, is going to be it for this episode. As ever, if you have car requests you would uh, like to see run down this course, please do leave them in the comments section. And the most liked car, if I can run it, if it's within the class and I can have got it slash can afford it, uh, it will have a go next time out. Also, if you are wanting to try this course out. Uh, it was actually recently featured on a Playground Games stream. Uh, so, and it got added, so thank you very much for adding it to the editor's choice. So if you want to have a go with this, it's now much easier to find. Previously, they're quite awkward to search up for game tags and whatnot, but as it has been added 
and it has a choice. It's much, much easier to have a go with this. You just have to head to the start line and it will appear up in there. That, though, is going to be it for this video. Thank you all very much for watching, and until next time, a goodbye.